Sopranos is a wonderful show. It's beautifully written. It's very well acted. But what I want to talk about is this. I think it's one of the great morality tales of our time. The church, you know, will often say, don't do this, don't do that. And we can be caricatured as just puritanical finger waggers. But see, what we're saying is, don't go down this path. It leads to destruction. Don't go down that path. It leads to perdition. Well, a show like The Sopranos demonstrates to you what it looks like when you go down one of these errant paths. And I want to talk about that. A number of features in The Sopranos that show us what evil is like. Most of the time in the show, Tony Soprano is an ordinary fella. We see him picking up his newspaper. We see him having his breakfast. We see him kibitzing with his friends. We're not threatened by him. He looks like a nice fella, ordinary guy. And so when he draws you into his world, you say, okay, sure. Darth Vader comes along, an orc comes along. Well, of course, I'll run away from them. They're, they're immediately threatening. Tony Soprano isn't. In his own funny way, he's charming. But all the while, he's involved in the most nefarious things. He runs a strip club, he's involved in pornography, he's bribery and extortion, racketeering, uh, threats, and cold-blooded murder. I would say he's more dangerous because the evil can be presented so banally in such an ordinary guise. We're not put off immediately by him. We might be drawn into his power. And that is a mark of evil, I think, in the real world. I think a second feature you see real clearly in The Sopranos is the corrosive quality of evil. We can delude ourselves that. We can sequester the dysfunctional parts of our life over in some little corner. And now I, I lead the rest of my life here, publicly and so on, and, and it's good. It's all the parts of my life that are fitting together. But there's this evil thing over here, but I think I can just keep it sequestered. It doesn't work. The Bible says it. Every great moral teacher says it. Evil is like an infection. It's like a cancer. It will work its way eventually through the whole of your system in this corrosive uh, manner. Where do you see it? You see it internally and externally. Tony's psyche, his mind, his soul is being corroded. His deep unhappiness, his anxiety, the anxiety, the panic attacks that he has you know, often during the show, the fact he's seeking out psychiatric counseling, his own psyche, is rebelling. His own psyche is collapsing under the weight of this uh, evil. But then secondly, his exterior world begins to fall apart. Look at his marriage. Look at his relationships. Look at his friendships. Look at his work. That in time, all of those too become dysfunctional, corroded. A third motif I think is very important in The Sopranos is complicity with evil. And the great figure here is Carmela, Tony's wife. There's a wonderful scene in The Sopranos where she goes to see a therapist who is utterly blunt with her. He lays out in a few well-chosen sentences exactly what's going on in her life. Your husband works for the mafia. He's in organized crime. He's a murderer. The money you have is blood money. It's based upon his nefarious life. The lifestyle you're leading is made possible by his cruelty and evil. And she knows it's all true. She breaks down, she cries, she goes home in a kind of fit of depression. But then, in very short order, Tony buys her a nice necklace. And she says, oh, Tony, that's wonderful. Thank you for that necklace. And she hugs him, and the crisis is over. And see, what it symbolizes is she knows the life that she loves, that beautiful mansion she lives in, this comfortable lifestyle is made possible by Tony's life. And though she knows it's evil, she is complicit with it. She enables him. And I think that's something we can all recognize in ourselves. Maybe we're not ourselves directly involved in evil, but often we are complicit with it. Often we'll see it. We know it. We know this person is doing something very uh, questionable, but we're benefiting from it maybe indirectly. And so we choose to look the other way. And we excuse ourselves. Well, look, I'm not directly involved. Yeah, but sometimes indirect involvement in evil is just as bad because it enables, it makes possible. You know, a theme that's all through the Bible, though it's very unpopular today, is the judgment of God. Old Testament on almost every page. New Testament, yes, it's also there that our God is a God of justice. 
What that means is he's a God of right order. God has made the world according to a particular order and design, harmony. How do you read a lot of the suffering that you see in The Sopranos? A lot of the, the dire um, depression and anxiety people fall into. Biblical people might be tempted to say, God's judgment. Now again, don't think of God in a snit, you know, passing judgment. It's this deep truth that when you get out of line, you can only with great pain be brought back onto line. And we call that God's judgment. Another take on it, think of Jesus' great line. The one who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Now is that God being arbitrarily, capriciously judgmental? No, that's a deep truth about life. That's all that is. That's a deep truth about life. You live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. The law of karma. You know, John Lennon said, instant karma is going to get you. Well, sometimes it's instant karma, sometimes. Other times it takes a little while, but it'll get you in the end. <laughs> you live in this dangerous, violent way, you will be compromised by it. Look at the trajectory of the lives of the people in The Sopranos. How many of them end up destroyed by the life they've been leading? hey, we're wise guys, we're good fellows, we're, we're on top of the world, we're the coolest people around. Yeah, maybe you think so, but watch how with a relentless inevitability they are brought to destruction. Well, that's the law of karma. Or if you want, that's God's judgment. That's God's justice expressing itself. I, I can't think of a better portrayal of it than the trajectory of the characters in The Sopranos. Mm -hmm.